A lot of patients ask, you know, what they can do beyond medications to control their inflammatory disease. And uh, medical doctors don't always have the best answers for that. So all of our data that's been collected over the years has really been driven by medications. So that's what we know the most about, is which medications can control inflammation, which are best at it, which work best for different diagnoses, how long to use them, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of interest um, from patients, however, about um, dietary changes that can be made to influence inflammation. And there's a lot of information out there on the internet about people claiming that they have diets that control inflammation and can really improve the outcomes and the um, feeling that people with autoimmune diseases have. Um, I'll be honest, there's really very little scientific data showing that any of those diets make a real lasting difference for patients. So my feeling is with patients, what the advice I give, if they have found a food that really seems to bother them, if they found an activity that really makes them feel better, as long as it's not gonna interfere with their health in any other way, then great. Don't eat that food that bothers you or go do that alternative medicine approach that really helps you feel better. Um, but there's really not data to support doing that instead of treating your autoimmune disease with medications. And all of our data suggests that if you're not on medications to control your inflammatory disease over the long term, you will do worse and there will be more disability 10, 20 years down the line. So, um, so I think it's important to, to do what you can to be healthy, um, but not to do that sort of instead of working with your rheumatologist closely to manage the inflammation that's going on. The vast majority of studies for inflammatory arthritis um, are performed on both men and women pretty equally. Actually, there's usually more women in the studies than men just because of there's more women with autoimmune diseases, in particular rheumatoid arthritis, than men. But there doesn't appear to be a difference in how men and women respond to different um, medications particularly. So we don't generally pick um, different medications for men versus different medications for women based on how well they're going to make you feel. We do, however, need to make some consideration about how we pick medications for women if they want to go on and get pregnant, particularly if they want to get pregnant in the near future. So for patients with inflammatory arthritis who um, are female and don't really want to get pregnant in the near future, um, they can really use any um, medication that's currently approved for inflammatory arthritis. As far as we know at this time, our studies all show us that none of our current medications impact fertility negatively. Um, none of them will um, cause you to have birth defects later if you're on it outside of pregnancy. So you can take whatever it is that you need to control your disease if you're not trying to get pregnant. Some of our medicines, however, do cause birth defects. And if you were to get pregnant, while taking methotrexate, which is really for, for patients with inflammatory arthritis the main problem. If you get pregnant taking methotrexate, you have a much higher rate of pregnancy loss, about 40%, and you have a higher rate of having a birth defect in that baby, it goes up to almost 10%. So we really strongly recommend that if you're taking methotrexate and you're female, that you strongly avoid getting pregnant. And for most women who are sexually active, well, all women are sexually active, that means using some sort of contraception or birth control. And I really recommend that it be a, um, a really highly effective birth control that really will prevent pregnancy well, like an, um, an intrauterine device, or um, which is also called an IUD, or um, birth control pills that you take really, really regularly. So we definitely have to think about the risk of medications to the pregnancy if, if a woman is trying to get pregnant. Um, we also have a lot of medications now for rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory arthritis for which we really don't have great pregnancy data. In fact, we don't really have any pregnancy data for some of these, none that would be considered reliable. It's, you know, the pregnancies that we know about are a small handful of pregnancies that happen by accident during a um, clinical trial. And so we don't really know the impact of getting pregnant on a lot of our newer um, medications um, at this point, we don't know if they increase birth effects. We don't know if they increase pregnancy loss. We just have no idea. Um, for women who, are, um, who fall pregnant on one of these medications, it can be really stressful because you just don't know. You don't know if, it's, if you've just put your potential um, infant at risk or yourself. 
So I really strongly recommend not using uh, medications that don't have any kind of pregnancy safety data in women who are either considering getting pregnant right now or are not using birth control. Methotrexate can cause a range of birth defects, most often um, abnormalities in the face. The good news with methotrexate is it's not as bad as we thought. So I was certainly trained to think that methotrexate um, caused birth defects in the vast majority of infants, and that's actually not at all true. 90% of infants that are live born after methotrexate exposure are actually normal. So methotrexate can be really problematic and it causes a lot of stress for women in pregnancy, um, but it's not as terrible as we thought it was. It's not as bad as some other medications, to be honest, um, but we certainly would like to avoid pregnancies on it.